and I want to thank the uh, Saudi Dental Society uh, for having me tonight. Uh, so uh, bear with me tonight, we're going to go through a journey of the art of uh, looking uh, young. Uh, these are my disclaimers. So, what is the art of question? What is the art of looking young? And for how long have we been looking for the secrets of maintaining eternal beauty and eternal youth? <laughs> so, who can name this painting? This is an actual painting by Lucas Cranach the Elder. It was done in 1546. Any guesses? Okay, so basically this is the Fountain of Youth. And uh, the Fountain of Youth is actually a myth. Uh, people have been looking for it for uh, thousands of years. Basically, some people thought that if you go and find the Fountain of Youth and you bathe in it or you drink from its waters, uh, then you are uh, going to turn from an old person to a younger person. Uh, so, we've not kind been of looking uh, for thousands of years for the fountain of you. And this has been uh, noted in history. So, if you find that in uh, Herodotus, who was a Greek historian, and he lived in the 15th century BC, he actually mentions a fountain. He says in his manuscripts, he led them to a fountain wherein when they had washed, they found their flesh all glossy and slick. So, uh, did we give up on the fountain of youth? Did we actually stop looking for it? Uh, to look for the eternal uh, youth and eternal beauty? Uh, where is this myth now? So now, we're actually, um, we find the fountain of youth, but it's in the needle. And in, it's in every aesthetic clinic that is just around the corner. So, why are we obsessed by looking young? Uh, before, we just didn't want to turn. We didn't want time to show uh, the difference uh, from uh, its effect on us. So if you take a look at this picture, this is a very famous picture by National Geographic. The photographer took a picture of this lady, a young lady, Afghani lady, and after 10 years he went and looked for her and took the picture on the side. So if you take a look at the picture, you can see the transition uh, from youth to an older age just over the period of 10 years. Um, if you take a closer look at the picture, uh, you can see that the youthful one, there's a heart-shaped uh, face, there's a smooth transition between uh, the cheeks down to the mouth, there's a pointed chin, there's no hollowness around the eyes, and there's a smoothness also from the top uh, part of the face to the lower part of the face. And if you look at the second picture, you can see the transition. So there's an inverted triangular uh, face. So instead of the pointed, uh, youthful um, face, a triangle or the heart shape, it becomes more square with time. And you can see the hollowness around the eyes. The tear trough uh, is, uh, is showing. There is loss of volume on the cheeks, and there is uh, more uh, showing of the deep lines, such as the nasolabial folds and the marinette lines. There's a downward angular angulation of the uh, sides of the mouth, and there's a squareness uh, at the lower part of the face. So you can see that we actually change uh, throughout time. And this was initially what we used to be concerned about, just how to, uh, we don't want time to show on us. And so this was before. But now, at this day and age, things have changed, actually. Because we're not just concerned about our face being changed into an aging face, we're actually concerned about the age of selfies. So now, people don't only want to look good, um, and they don't want to age, but they actually want to look good on their selfies. So, you can see that it is promoted by Hollywood, and it's also promoted um, by a song. It's actually called Let's uh, Take a Selfie. And you can see also Obama uh, participating in this uh, trend. Uh, this is Kyle Jenner, and she's actually one of the famous uh, notorious selfie takers on the internet. I get a lot of requests by women coming to me wanting to change their faces to the way she looks. Uh, why do they want to change? They want to look more prominent features. So not just only they want to look younger, but they want their features to be more prominent. So a more prominent cheek, a more prominent chin, and a more prominent nasal uh, profile. So they can look good on their snapshots, on their Instagram, and they want to seek that like button. So even statistics-wise, you can see that there's an upward trend in uh, cosmetic procedures. So a lot of cosmetically minimally invasive procedures have increased. 
Um, if you take a look between the year 2000 and the year 2015, you can see that just vaginal toxin procedures have increased by 759 percent. And just between the year 2014, 2015, there's one percent increment, and this increment is increasing. Also, if you take a look at the soft fillers, and, um, at the uh, soft uh, tissue fillers, uh, there's an increment in one year by 6%. And in 2000 to 2014, so sorry, to 2015, there was an increment of 275 percent. This is more of a, um, yeah, a graph that's actually showing a lot more. Uh, so you can see that botulinum toxin is the top uh, requested by people as many, many invasive procedures, and soft tissue fillers comes into second place. But to me, aesthetic medicine is actually an art. You're kind of like a sculpture. You're sculpturing the face. You're smoothing out the lines. And you're smoothing out the wrinkles. And you really have to get your own version of perfection of Venus, or if you like, Mona Lisa. Uh, just as uh, Leonardo kept working on this painting for years and years. So enough of philosophy, and let's talk more scientific. So this is the uh, aging process. If you take a look, the inverted uh, triangle. So when we're young, we're actually the triangle is pointed downwards. And as we age, the triangle becomes pointed upwards, and the base of it is pointed at the base of the face. So you can see this transition. In order for us to reverse these signs, we need a lot of tools. What are these tools in this day and age? We're lucky, we actually have a lot of tools. Um, most of the people think about fillers and Botox, but this is not the only tools that we have in order for us to revert the signs of aging. Now, there's a new trend which we use threads. We also use energy-based devices. We're using plasma um, injections and mesotherapy. We also use peels and we have a big uh, amount of uh, different cosmeceutical agents in skincare. So these are the tools. Let's talk about the first type of tool that's more interesting to most of the people, and this is requested by a lot of the patients that come. They think this is the only option that they have in order to revert the sign of aging, which is fillers. So the usual fillers that we use, there are many different types of fillers, but the ones that most of the aesthetic practitioners use are these. Hyaluronic acid, uh, which is all of the fillers almost. Uh, you have the calcium hydroxy appetite, which is the radius, and then you have the poly lactic acid, which is used by a minority of aesthetic um, uh, practitioners. Okay, so I'm going to pull the favor cards here and talk only about one filler, which is the hyaluronic acid. Why I'm talking about this, this is the most, uh, this is what you're going to find in all of the aesthetic uh, medicine uh, centers. Um, the hyaluronic acid is actually uh, derived from the streptococcal equine. It's cross-linked with the B. Uh, BDTE and is stabilized and suspended in a phosphate buffer saline at the pH of 7 uh, concentration and in another animal stabilized hyaluronic acid. Before we only had one concentration which is the 20 mg per ml but now there's new uh, generations of fillers coming out uh, which is up to 24 mg per ml. Now this is according to your preference, um, we use either with lidocaine or without uh, lidocaine. I don't see the, actually in, in real practice, I don't see the benefit of the lidocaine. Um, the patients are complaining of pain due to the uh, injection itself or the introduction of the injection itself. Uh, so I don't see a lot of uh, difference um, in using it or without use, but this goes back to the uh, practitioner's preference. What we like about hyaluronic acid is that there's no need for skin um, uh, testing before with the collagen type, we have to skin test the uh, patients before we use uh, the fillers. Uh, now, the duration of action is actually the duration of the longevity of the filler uh, differs. And this is according to the G-Prime note, and it ranges from uh, 3 months up to 12 months. Most of the fillers, they stay from 6 to 9 months. This is the ones that we usually like. Uh, there are some fillers that stay up to 24 months, which is two years, uh, but this is not very preferable because it's usually a stiff type of filler, and these fillers uh, don't mobilize very easily with the face, so we don't like using them a lot, but some people like to. Uh, contraindications, anybody who has any kind of uh, uh, history or hypersensitivity, 
immediately reactions to uh, the uh, gram positive uh, bacteria proteins then should avoid using the hyaluronic acid. Also, if we're using a hyaluronic acid with a lidocaine, anybody who has history of hyaluronic sensitivity, we also should avoid. What I like about the hyaluronic uh, acid uh, fillers is that we can reverse it. So if the patient doesn't like her results or she doesn't have changed her mind, like a lot of our patients here uh, do, uh, we can reverse it by injecting the hyaluronidase. Of course, there's some situation where we actually have to only be able to remove it surgically. So before anybody even thinks about injecting, there are certain things that you really have to think about. So these things you actually have to visualize on the patient before you even touch them. So all the facial arteries um, need to be known um, because you need to know where they are in order not for you to occlude them, which will be a disaster, or uh, for, in order for also uh, not to cause a, any damage to these arteries um, and cause a necrosis effect. We also need to know the veins, because if you puncture one of these veins while you're doing the procedure, you get a big bruise, and the patient, you'll never see them again. Uh, you also need to know about the nerves on the face, because uh, you want to use them if you're the kind of person who uses the anesthesia uh, in that area. So uh, you can anesthetize according to uh, the nerve distribution. Uh, we have to know the danger zones um, uh, regarding before we even inject the patients. Uh, one of the danger zones is the area on the uh, glabular area. Uh, this is something that people try to avert from uh, doing uh, now. We try to avoid uh, injecting this area by fillers. Uh, because the, the branches on the supratrochular artery actually go very superficially and it's easily occluded and causes necrosis. There's also, um, there's also reports of blindness that happen due to injection of the, of the glabular lines. Uh, we also have to think when we're trying to inject the nasolabial fold about the angular artery uh, because that gets occluded very frequently. We also think about the temporal, the superficial temporal artery and that's the danger zone when we're trying to fill the temporal uh, uh, space, the hollowness in that area. Uh, also the lips, you don't ever want to lose your lips so you have to also think about uh, the labial arteries. Uh, in that area, and also people who like to enjoy injecting the nose, uh, they have to think about the uh, nasal branches. So the danger of nose are very important before even touching any patient. We have to keep it in mind. So there are many phases of the fillers. We have the good, the bad, and the ugly. So what is the good? If we want to go really textbook-wise, and we want to think about the patient in a textbook uh, way, uh, this is the facial landmarks, and this is the ideal proportions of the face. So basically, we divide the face into three portions. Um, and also, we have to think about the area of in the, between the, uh, the subnasal, uh, the lips, and the, uh, mental, um, the mental area. Uh, because this is also helps us with, uh, help, help to proportionize when we're doing uh, fillers for the lips. This is the, the sign profile, and this is uh, in order for us to think about when we do profile enhancement. Now, do I really take a measuring tape and go and uh, measure the patients before I inject them? No, we don't do that, uh, because that's too textbook, and also we lose the individuality of the patient, because patients have their own individual features that we should think about and we should try to enhance. So we don't look at them as textbook, we look at them as human beings with individuality.